everybody, Natalie Madison here from Art Is In Cakes, and I am so excited. Today, we are taking on another Nailed It style challenge. But this time, we are creating anatomical hearts. Stylized, of course, not, not the gory kind of heart. It's not a Halloween kind of trend. It's a heart with flowers and honeycomb and textures, but we've got to get it done in two hours or less. Let's get to it. heart template in place. Now we're gonna use a paring knife or you can use a serrated knife and we're just going to cut around this edge. Doesn't have to be exact, but it needs to be a fairly close cut around that template. Now our hearts don't start out flat. We want this to have three dimensionality. We're gonna use this to build up our heart into three dimensional roundness. Let me show you how to do that. We're gonna start with our mixer, stand mixer works best for this, with just a paddle attachment in place. And we're going to throw all of our cake scraps right inside that bowl. Now this vein is what we consider in the foreground. So I'm going to leave it at its full height, but I'm gonna slice out a little bit back behind it for the veins that are down below. So all I did was score and then use my knife tip to get back behind it and peel out some of that extra cake. I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper and I'm going to slowly taper this portion down. Now, a lot of this is going to get flowers on top of it, so if you feel like something doesn't quite work, don't worry about it too much because we're gonna hide any mistakes with flowers. I'm just cutting out this little notch right here. So you can see it's got a little bit more depth in there. So I'm going a little bit deeper and making this vein or aorta or whichever it might be. I have no clue. I guess I need to look at my um, anatomical heart. That would happen to be the left pulmonary artery, it looks like. It goes right there. I'm turning this guy off, lifting up the paddle just scraping those crumbs back in. I am going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of buttercream to this to help it come together. And when I say tiny, I mean like not much at all. Now you're gonna be tempted to put more icing into this bowl, but I want you to wait. I want you to wait to see if the smashing action of that paddle can bring those crumbs together so it's nice and firm. That way, when we use it as three-dimensional cake pieces, it doesn't smash when we start adding our fondant and details to it. One more time, I'm going to stop this, scrape it away from the sides, and you can see it's starting to form a dough. We're looking for something that's the consistency of thick sugar cookie dough. Let's see if this is stiff enough now to come together into a ball. So I can get in here and feel this and see if it needs just a little bit more buttercream, but that's what I'm looking for. This is the consistency of fondant or Play-Doh, and that's what makes this easy to work with, to mold and to shape. So this is perfect. I'm gonna push this out of the bowl, form it into a ball, and use it to build up the different pulmonary arteries and veins. I can also use it to build up the heart just a little bit more because although this is rounded, it's still pretty flat on top. So I can take this dough and instead of building this up with fondant, I can build this up with cake. All right, next I'm going to tackle this back vein right here. So I have a little section carved out, but to give that a little bit more three-dimensionality, I'm going to first roll myself a ball, then roll it into a log. Now it's gonna have little dents and dimples, that's okay. Does not make a difference. What we really want to do, see if we can build up that three-dimensional piece. 
So I'm just laying this right over this edge. I can pinch that closed. But you can see now, there's definitely a three-dimensional piece that comes up and over. And this one also, we could round that a little bit by adding a little bit of the same, <laughs> same consistency dough, flattening one end so it kind of feels like it's going to tuck back behind that and over. And this one piece keeps trying to crack on me, so I'm going to put a little bit of filler putty in there as well. All right, so now I feel like this has good three-dimensionality, especially the primary parts, which are the left pulmonary artery, and this is the aortic arch. My doctor friends would be very proud of me right now. And that guy comes back and around the cake. So I'm going to push this portion right here down a little bit deeper. So all I did was reach in there with my finger, yes, my finger, and I pushed that down so that it looks like this is curving back underneath. And I don't know if you can see that, but we have the beginnings of a very nice three-dimensional heart with identifiable anatomical correct pieces. I have a little bit left of that cake pop batter. I'm not really sure where I want to use it or if I need to use it right now, but if I did, it would probably be a little build up right in here. For some more placement of three dimensional parts. Now, even though these parts are Play-Doh consistency, they're not gonna stick to this cake. When I start messing with it, they're gonna wanna slide a little bit. So I'm gonna use a little bit of that buttercream lift these guys up if they haven't adhered, put a little buttercream down and make it stick to that cake. Now that portion has stuck. But these guys, they're a little bit loose. So I'm gonna put a little bit of buttercream right in there, press it down. That guy definitely needs a little glue. That guy's all right, he's in there too. Next step, we're gonna put a thin coat of buttercream over the whole piece. Easiest way is just with my spatula. This does not need to be a thick coat. It actually needs to be a fairly thin coat. We're gonna place fondant on top of this. We don't want it to be too sickly sweet. You can use your spatula like this, or you can use a bag and use a coupler and ice that. I'm just gonna use a piping bag with a coupler attached. A little bit of icing scooped in there. And now I can squeeze icing into place all around this bottom edge. Do one more row here. And I could use my spatula to scrape that up and over. When using a spatula, when you're lifting the spatula up, if you're using a flat spatula and you lift up, it will often peel your icing right off the cake. What you wanna do instead is take that spatula, when you're ready to lift it up, turn it on its blade edge so you have less surface attachment and less surface tension. That'll help that icing release without pulling your cake crumbs off. Thin icing, because we want to be able to get into all of those little nooks and crannies. We want to see the three dimensionality. Angled offset spatulas may make this a little bit easier as well. So I've got one with a smaller point, smaller tip to it, so I can get back behind here and roll that icing. Remember any mistakes? get covered with flowers. So there's our thin coat in place. Now what do we do about all of this rough texture? I have some really flexible thin cutting boards that I use to cut into bendable scrapers. So I can take this piece of plastic, turn it on its edge, bend it, and create a nice smooth coat of icing. I can also bend it really tightly to get over those veins. And then this portion up here, I'm not too worried about when we press the fondant in, plus we'll be putting in tons of flowers. So there's our thin coat. Now we're ready to roll out our fondant and create a covering. Before we get started in actually covering this fondant, one of the things I loved about this piece of art was this honeycomb texture right here. And we can do some really cool things with that. You guys see that? But you see that it's inset beneath the solid surface, the skin of the heart. So we're going to create this little piece first. I have a little bit of honey comb colored fondant. And for this project, I'm gonna roll this out thickly. So this is gonna be a thick roll, but I want this to be 
probably about quarter to half an inch thick. And here's why. We're gonna take our modeling tools. I'm just gonna use a standard ball tool here. And I'm going to start making little divots inside that fondant. And this is just a medium ball tool. And you can see we're starting to get that honeycomb texture. We can leave this very organic and it doesn't have to be large. I mean, if this is our two scale piece, this is a large piece of fondant. So now I can take this and just cut around organically, meaning no specific shape, cut around those cells. So I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit and I'm going to flatten the outside edges. That way it blends in with our heart body and not just suddenly look like the fondant stops and there's a piece shoved underneath it. So I'm pulling and pinching that to flatten it out just a little bit. Now I can choose my location, place it, and force those thinner edges right down into that buttercream icing. We're now going to take our white fondant, and we could use pre-colored fondant, but I really like the effect of coloring this completely top to bottom with different shades. So rather than having red fondant, I'm going to use white fondant and then color it. I pick that fondant up each roll and give it a turn. I do need this guy to be fairly long in shape versus wide. So keep that in mind as you're rolling. And because we are going to force this into little crevices, we need it to be a little bit thicker than what we think of for cakes. So we're gonna leave this about a quarter inch thickness, maybe a little bit more. I can stretch it a little bit with my hands. This fondant does dry fairly quickly, so I want to move quickly. As soon as it's big enough to cover the outside of my board, this is a 10 inch board. As soon as it's at least 10 inches, it should be large enough to cover our cake. So I'm gonna turn this wider part up here to go to the top where all of the aortas and veins are hanging out. Place it, drop it, and now I'm going to press that fondant down. And I can see where my honeycomb's hanging out there. We'll cut that in a minute. We wanna work on this portion first. Right here in this corner, we know we press down the cake so we're gonna press that fondant into that space. Press it up and under and into that space. We also have our first pulmonary <laughs> vein, I think is what we said, hanging out right in there, plus this one on the side. So I'm pressing down with my thumbs and in with the palm and the edge of my hand. And now I can get in here and really start shaping. Once I have it around the cake and I'm not tearing, I can get in and shape, shape, shape. First up, modeling tools. Again, I'm gonna focus again right in here. And I have a vein behind this one. So I'm gonna press this up a little bit so I can expose the other vein. There it is right there. And I'm gonna make it real obvious that there is a line where this vein comes in. I'm also going to take this larger ball tool end and press right here to open that vein. Not so deep that I cut through the fondant, but definitely deep enough that it looks like the vein is open. Then I have this other vein that's coming around. We have it over there. And I'm going to press this around with it. So now we're just trying to kind of mimic the shape of our art piece. There's that vein coming up and over. And then we have all kinds of little veins here. We had that one that we set up right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this into that cake pop batter. Make it open up a little. And using the Dresden tool, I'm also going to make it look like it's round. Different fondants will give you different effects. Fondant blended with modeling chocolate gives you a lot of time to play and to build textures. I am deepening that crease. I'm also coming in here and giving this vein or artery a little more dimension. 
Again, coming in just a little bit more here, making sure this looks like an actual curved opening. Pushing it in slightly, tucking it in close. I can go ahead and release my honeycomb. To do that, I'm gonna use a sharp blade. And right about where I can see, first little bump, I'm gonna cut out the fondant. When I reach under here and peel, I should be able to release it from the honeycomb. Now, I kinda like this rough and ragged edge. I think I'm gonna pinch it just a little bit. And now I can either wrap this up and under the cake so I can pick it up, or I can cut it up nice and close. I'm actually going to cut this. So I'm cutting about a quarter to half an inch away from the cake itself, because I would like to tuck this under just a little bit, and I can use my Dresden tool to do that. The fondant is starting to dry already, so it's gotta be very fast. And in fact, it's probably too dry for me to do that. So I'm going to come through and trim it closer. I don't have to worry too much about this top edge because we'll be adding flowers. I'm gonna cut just a little bit out of here. Now that I have the outside edges, I'm gonna take a moment to start adding texture where the veins come around. This is part of that art texture. And this is my Dresden tool. So just a very simple texture going on around where those veins and arteries are bending. Next up, we're gonna start adding a little bit of color in terms of some additional veins. We will be coloring most of this red. So we're going to add a little bit of blue toned fondant to this to build up some of that vein and artery texture. We're also gonna do the same thing with a little bit of our red fondant. In anatomical hearts, the Vein and arteries kind of run together. They kind of follow the same flow or pattern. And we're going to mimic that. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this blue and roll it nice and thin. And it's okay if it stretches to the point of breaking. I'm going to stretch that more to a point. And I'm just tapping it down and stretching it until it finds its own breaking point. And if it's not sticking to the fondant, it just means that your surface isn't, um, is too dry, too dry to stick. This is when things start really getting fun. I'm like, yeah, it starts to look like a heart. If it starts sticking more to your fingers than it does to the heart, just dry your fingers. And you can use your modeling tools to make these just a little bit wavier. All right, now there is a little bit of like a fleshy flange, <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, up here toward the top. I'm gonna go ahead and make that as well. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my white fondant in this. I'm gonna use just a little bit of that red and blend it in. I'm gonna make two balls, one large and one smaller. I'm going to flatten that out with my hand, and then I'm going to wrap it, starting here at the base of that large ventricle, so right there. I'm gonna place this right in here, and it wraps down and around the heart. Again, if it's not sticking, use just a little bit of water on the back side of this. And if you feel like it's too big, you can take some of this off. A little bit of water to make it sticky. Now when I place it, it's definitely gonna stay in place. I'm going to use my ball tool and give it some texture. Make sure it's tucked down and around that part. Something like this, I definitely exaggerate some of that texture. And we're gonna make a small one right back here. So 
So there we have a little bit of detail. Now we're ready to start coloring this. I'm gonna start by putting some highlights on the honeycomb. So right now it's a little bit dark. So I'm gonna use a little bit of white food coloring and just brush on some white highlights. Makes it look like that honeycomb is just a little more 3D by giving it highlights. I really did love the colorations of this artwork. So that's what I'm going to go by. So I'm starting with a little bit of a guava orange, guava pink, and adding a few drops of that into my paint palette. Um, I also have a little bit of red, but I'm gonna start with that and probably add some gold and yellow. I'm going to use just a little bit of water to loosen this up a little. And I'll even take some water here because I don't want it to be bold guava orange. I want it to be kind of light. Adding a little bit of yellow in here now. And I brush right over those veins too. Now we're gonna begin adding flowers. I'm going to start with a small ball, fold into a ball, and then I'm going to flatten out the top corner into a cone shape. So we kind of have a teardrop shape. Then using much smaller pieces, I'm gonna roll into a ball and then flatten it out. Flatten out the top edges especially. The bottom base can be a little bit thick, but we need the top edge of the petal to be thin. Now I'm going to pick up that cone, starting up here at the top. I'm going to apply one side of my petal and begin wrapping. Pick up another petal and just tuck it in and finish wrapping that over. And then tuck in the next edge and I'm going to keep doing this until I continue to make my cone shape flower. So I'm going to tuck the next one in and roll around. It's still open on this edge. Grab the next petal, tuck it into place, and continue wrapping. I'm gonna take a little ball of this fondant Place it flat on my table. Use the spoon side of my dressing tool. Place it in the middle and point that one edge while grabbing the fat or thick side and pulling it together. Point that again. Grab it with my dressing tool. Find a home for it and place it. And this is cake drip mixed with gold dust. This is going to be our honey ooze on our anatomical heart cake. And that's it. That is the end of this Nailed It style challenge. 3D anatomical heart. The inspiration came from Matt Vissers. You can find his anatomical hearts and tattoo style artwork at redbubble.com. But this is our version, super excited. We did it under two hours. We have the heart, we have veins and arteries. We even have the, the larger ventricles. We've inserted our honeycomb in there, gold drip flowers, and then we added our own spin on it with a little bit of gold detailing. I hope you've enjoyed this Nailed It Challenge. I know I have. I love doing stuff like this. 
please feel free to reach out if you have questions. And if you decide to tackle this project, please add your photos. You can find all these supplies, of course, on our website at artisincakes.com. That's artisincakes.com.